This is a lecture about the graph theoretic concept of trees. Let's start with the definition. A tree is a connected graph that has no circuits. I'm showing you three examples over on the right. You can see in every case that these are graphs that don't have any circuits at all, and therefore they are trees. Here's another example, just kind of a fun example from a book that I really love. This is from H.A. Ray's book called The Stars. He was the author of the Curious George books, which you may know. He also had this delightful book where he took the constellations in the sky and he made new, much better drawings of their shapes. In particular, here are the stars of the constellation that's called Gemini, meaning the twins, and look at how cleverly he's drawn a tree, that is to say he's drawn edges connecting the stars, the vertices, so as to create something that really does look like some twins. Okay, maybe a somewhat more serious example. Here are compounds in chemistry which are called alkanes. And here's the definition. These are compounds that consist only of hydrogen and carbon atoms. They are bonded exclusively by single bonds without any cycles. All right, so in our terminology, these are certain sorts of trees where each vertex is represented either by the letter C or the letter H. We're only supposed to draw in single edges, and we don't want to have any circuits. Now, remember that the C, the carbon, and the hydrogen must always have specified degrees, or as the chemistry people say, uh, valences. A carbon must always have degree 4, and a hydrogen must always have degree 1. So if you're trying to draw one of these molecular diagrams for an alkane, you're very constrained in what you can do. As a matter of fact, what you need to do to begin with is to draw some tree of carbon atoms. So in the example here, here is a tree of three carbon atoms. Then you can add on an appropriate number of H's. And I think you'll quickly realize as you begin to draw possibilities that the number of carbon atoms actually determines the number of hydrogen, hydrogen atoms. You're actually going to explore that idea a bit further in your recitation. So what you do is you just draw a tree of carbons. Uh, never draw anything of degree greater than four, although you can draw things that are of smaller degree because you can fix that up by adding hydrogen atoms. So when you try that out, if you're using a single carbon atom, then it turns out you need to attach four hydrogens, and there's only one way to do that. You get a compound called methane. If you have two carbons, there's only one way to form the tree of carbons. You then have to add six hydrogens. You'll get something called ethane. And here are two more examples, obviously forming the beginning of some kind of series of chemical compounds. There's propane and there's butane. Here's another example coming from something called phylogenetics, which in biology is the study of evolutionary relationships among species. Well, evolution is a branching process. That is to say, there are occasions when a single species separates. It speciates, as they say in biology. It separates into two or more separate species. We won't think very much about the mechanism by which this occurs, but it certainly is known to occur. And you can't have the opposite. <clears throat> that is to say, you can't have two species that somehow merge and become a single species. So this evolutionary process leads us to draw a tree. From a single species, we may develop several species, and it's shown in the kind of tree that's drawn here. In fact, you notice there's an element of time in here. As we go from left to right this way, we're going forward in time, so that what we see at the right end are the currently occurring, or perhaps the now extinct species, and further back in time, we see common ancestors. In fact, at some point, there was a single 
common ancestor. Anyway, if you're going to study phylogenetics, this is your basic mathematical understanding. It's by using the mathematical tool called a tree. Now, let's see if we can systematically look at all the possibilities for distinct trees with six vertices. This will just give us uh, an interesting example to think about. Suppose we want to draw all trees with six vertices. Now we don't want to draw the same example twice. We don't want to draw two graphs that when we're done we would say, oh, they are the same. Now the largest degree that we can have for a vertex is five. And if you have a vertex of degree five, then in fact it must be connected to all the other vertices by single edges. And once you do that, well, that's your tree. That's a tree with six vertices, and it's the only possibility if you want to have a vertex of degree five. All right, you can't have degree greater than five, so what about degree four? Well, if you have degree four, then already four other vertices have to be immediately adjacent to that vertex, and there's only one more to be added on. It could be added to any one of these four, but they all give the same result, so there's only one possibility there. So let's look at degree three. Let's suppose there's a single vertex of degree three. Well, now it turns out there are two possibilities because coming out from this vertex of degree three, there will be three chains, right? Here's one, two, three chains coming out. And you can distribute the vertices on those three chains in two different ways. You can either put one chain having a single vertex and then the other two each having two sort of making a cluttered picture as I circle everything. The other possibility is to have two chains of length one and then a third one having length three as shown here. Now there's also the possibility that you can have two vertices of degree three and you quickly realize that they had better be adjacent to each other, that is to say connected by an edge. And then when you do that, then the other four vertices that you're required to draw then are forced into their positions. And so that's the only possibility with two vertices of degree three. And you can't have any more than that. And then finally, what's left is to think about the possibility of having all vertices of degree one or two, in which case you're forced to draw just a long chain like the one that I've shown here. So there are five, no, six possible trees with six vertices. I'd like to ask you to try as a little exercise the same thing using five vertices, okay? Try to draw all the different trees with five vertices. I'm going to show you the answer in a moment, but I'd like you to stop the video and try to solve the problem yourself, okay? Try to draw all the trees with five vertices. Okay, and here they are. It turns out there were only three distinct trees with five vertices. You can either have a vertex of degree four, as shown here, and there's only one possibility, or a vertex of degree three, and again, you'll see that there's only one possibility, or all vertices having degree one or two, in which case you're forced to draw what's shown at the bottom here. Those are all the possibilities. Now, one more thing before we stop with this preliminary lecture on trees, and that's to ask for a tree, how is the number of edges related to the number of vertices? Well, here are the three examples I showed you earlier, and let's look at them one at a time. Let's just count. Okay, so in this first example at top left, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine vertices, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. So let's record those numbers. Let's just call these numbers E and, and uh, V. So let's do V first. V means the number of vertices. V is, uh, what did I say, nine. And E, the number of edges, is eight. All right, let's look at this example over here. Again, let's try to count systematically. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 vertices. So V is 12. And how many edges? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, E is 11. There are 11 edges. And now look at the one at the bottom, the one I'm now circling. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 vertices. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 edges. Now, it's only three examples, but I think already you've guessed what the relationship is, and you believe that it's always going to be true. And the relationship is that the number of edges is one less than the number of vertices. You might want to think about how you could actually prove that. In other words, not just give three examples, but give an argument to show that must always be the case. So let's just say this in a fancy way to end up here. If a tree has n vertices, then it must have n minus 1 edges.